remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Now, there are a couple of things here I believe that we can pretty well definitely say the apostle was not talking about. All you have to do is read the context here of the fourth chapter uh, and the third chapter of the book of Hebrews. And I think you'll see what he wasn't talking about. The first thing he wasn't talking about was that he's not talking about the literal observance of the Sabbath as done by the Jews at that time period. That was a rest. But that was a typical rest. That was a type and a shadow of a greater rest that was to follow. Now there were a lot of Jews at that time period and there are, were a lot of them that were zealous for the law. Paul was one of those before his conversion, wasn't he? He was zealous for the law. So much that when he persecuted and wasted the church of God, he thought that he gave God service. If there was anyone that was going to glorify anything to do with the law, it would have been the man that was blameless concerning it. And he said, touching the righteousness concerning the law, I was blameless. That's not what he's got in consideration here. It's not a legal rest. It's not a Sabbath rest that he's talking about here as far as an earthly Sabbath is concerned. But Paul went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Yes, he did. Paul did go to the synagogue on the Sabbath. And did what? And reasoned with the Jews that were there concerning that Jesus was the Christ. He didn't go there in order to participate in the worship that was going on as far as it contradicted the revelation that was given him that Jesus was the Christ. And when it came right down to it and the lines of division were drawn and those that claimed to Paul were on one side of the line and those that were zealous for the tradition of the fathers were on the other side of the line, what happened? He didn't go to the synagogue anymore, did he? No. When the apostles Peter and John were imprisoned by the Jews there in the first part of the book of Acts, I believe it is in either, I believe it's in the fourth chapter that you can read about that. It says when they were let go, they didn't go back to the synagogue, but they went to their own company. Even though they had been meeting in the temple, even though they had been meeting among, in the precincts of the temple, they met there amongst themselves, separate from the rest. So yes, they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. But it wasn't for any other reason than to show that this Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, and to reason from the scriptures that that was so. When they went into cities, Paul and the brethren that were with him, and when they constituted churches, and when they set up assemblies, they didn't set them up according to the plan of the synagogue. They set them up according to the plan of Jesus. The plan that Jesus revealed. Not according to that which had no scriptural basis. The synagogue was an invention of the Jews for worship on the Sabbath when they couldn't go to the temple. You'll not find anywhere in the law on how to regulate the synagogue. You'll not find anywhere in the Old Testament for the rules of worship in the synagogue. In the temple, yes. In the tabernacle, yes. But not in the synagogue. They came there on the Sabbath to reason, read the scriptures and to have fellowship with, with each other. But that's not what was commanded by God. See, Paul and his fellows and Peter and Barnabas and all of them, the Sabbath wasn't their rest. Though they went to the synagogue on the Sabbath, 
It wasn't to participate in the false worship that was going there. It was to show them the truth. There remaineth therefore a rest for the people of God. It wasn't even the rest of possessing the promised land when Joshua led the children of Israel over. That wasn't the rest that he had in mind. No, there is a rest that remained. Man, it's only to God's people. Now the world is out there and the wicked, the scripture tells us, are like the troubled sea that cannot rest. That cannot rest. They're being tossed about, as Jude said, with every wind of doctrine. These are the raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. That's all that are outside the number of the people of God. But to the people of God, there's a rest. How? How can there be a rest for them when they possess the same nature as the ones styled the wicked? When they are, as Paul said in writing to the church at Ephesus, when they are by nature children of wrath, even as others. Talking about the earthly nature. Talking about the carnal nature. Because they're the people of God. And God has provided for them a rest that he has not provided for any on the outside of that term, the people of God. Now he uses that term in order to separate them from all the other peoples on the earth. This is a peculiar people. Because they are gods. How does the rest remain to them? I said we're going to read one verse, but we're going to read two. For he that is entered into his rest. Verse 10. He tells them. He also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. How is there a rest for God's people? They have ceased from something. Their own works. Their own works. Now that's one of the hardest things for men to do. They cease from their own works. Because they want to build up their own works. They want to have them. They want to keep them. They want to do them. But there's no resting there. There's work. That's exactly what Paul is telling us here. Here are people who are working. And here are people who are resting. The ones that are working have not ceased from their labors. But continue in them. They want their own works and they're going to do them and they're going to build them and they're going to find when they have built them, they have built on the wrong foundation and they have built with the wrong substance. They're building all right. Wood, hay, and stubble. They're building all right. They're building a wall and they're daubing it up and they're placing untempered mortar between the joints. They're building all right. They're laying cities and joining house to house and field to field. But none of these things that they're building will stand the day of trial. The wood, the hay, and the stubble will be burned up in the day of the fire. The wall that's been built up and daubed with untempered mortar, no matter how much peace is cried unto it, and no matter how much safety they think is behind it, all of those works shall be swept away in the wind. The houses, the fields that are there as a refuge for them, the hail shall sweep away the refuge of life. No, the people of God have ceased from their own works because they realize what their works are worth. Nothing when the day of trial comes because they can't stand. Well, whose works will stand? The God who worked. For six days. The God who worked and spoke. The God who gave them the righteousness that they so desired. 
he that's entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. Certainly has. Because one whose work will stand the fiery trial, one whose work will stand the storm, one whose work will remain in the midst of the hail has done greater works than you or I shall ever attend. There's where the rest comes. Ceasing from your works as God did from him. Not saying I will. Think of that parable that our Lord told about the rich man. He says, I have plenty. My barns can't hold it all. So what will I do? I will tear down these barns. And I will build bigger barns. And I will say to my soul, 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 take thy needs. What was he doing? He was even working for the future. He was planning the works that he would do tomorrow. Not realizing that the works that he had done today were worthless. Because that very night his soul would be required of him. He that's entered into his rest has ceased from his labors. He has ceased from his own works. There's a true rest. There's a real rest. Our Lord said, take my yoke upon me. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light and ye shall find rest for your souls. What did that Sabbath typify? This rest. What did the entering into the land of Canaan and the subduing it and all of the war and all of the fighting and all of the bloodshed, what did that symbolize? This rest. A ceasing from a labor for spiritual things. Our Armenian world likes to sing a song. I'm working on a building. Well, they can build it. They can have their building. You know, they began a building back. In ancient times and said we can build a tower to reach up to heaven and we will commune with God there we will be gods we will have God in our back pocket and he must do exactly what we say because we're going to build we're going to labor we're going to work and it's a term that we use today even the world does the Tower of Babel because what resulted in it? Confusion. And they never got the tower built. Well, that's the kind of building that they're building when they're working on that building. They're going to build themselves a building. And in it, they will have God. And in it, they will have all of the things necessary. Because they have built it to, to the specification to box him in. The heaven of heavens cannot contain him. But yet a body did. A body of flesh come to this earth. His reward was with him and his work before him. And he completed every bit of it. So that on the cross he cried, it is finished. What was that reward that was with him? It was every one of his children, every one of these people of God that were united to him before the foundation of the world. What was the work that was before him? That was the working out of the salvation for them. His works are so glorious that they were accepted before the Father. When he went into the holiest of all and sprinkled the mercy seat with his blood 
And God raised him from the dead, declaring him to be the Son of God with power by the resurre resurrection from the dead. He that has entered into his rest has ceased from his own works. Because a greater one has worked them for us. May the Lord bless us to enter into that rest. May the Lord bless us to possess it. Because that's the only real rest on this earth.